and welcome to another episode of Used Bike Heaven with me, Fran Robinson. Each week, one lucky punter gets to test three bikes that we feel suits their lifestyle, needs and pocket. And then hopefully at the end of the show, they'll walk away with a bargain. This week we have three of the best super sports bikes that money can buy, so let's hope they can live up to our testers' expectations. We also have the lovely Rod Gibson standing by to give some essential tips on bike maintenance. So without further ado, let's meet this week's test rider. Kevin Pumphrey is a manager with Birmingham City Council. He's been riding bikes for around 20 years and currently rides an XJR 1300 SP, which takes both him and his girlfriend all over the country. Kevin has decided it's time for him to have a new toy and is looking for a super sports bike that will allow him to have fun on the roads as well as allow him to partake in a track day or two. Hopefully our selection will fit this bill. So Kevin's looking for an out and out sports bike for around £7,000. With this budget we've come up with a nice selection of bikes all around two years old. All three are top of the range super sports bikes and should make Kevin grin like a Cheshire cat whenever he rides them. Let's see what the first bike is. First up it's Honda's Fireblade. Since its launch in 1992 the Fireblade has been the iconic super sports bike and Honda has worked hard to keep it that way. The 2002 model features a whole raft of changes, with the most notable being a capacity hike to 954cc. Power is now a very healthy 149bhp, allied to a new swing arm, lighter wheels and you have possibly the most civilised super sports bike around. Competition in this class is fiercer than ever, so Honda have taken away some of the blade's raw edginess and therefore made the bike easier to live with on a day-to-day -day basis. This may not appeal to the die-hard sports bike riders, but your average rider will feel a lot more comfortable on this bike than on a lot of its rivals. Super sports bike for the masses. Maybe, just maybe. So Kevin, bike number one, the rather lovely Honda Fireblade. What do you think to the looks of this? Very sexy, awesome looking bike. It is, isn't it? Are you into yellow though? No, but I could be. Because mm, I think that silver running through there just makes it look so classy, doesn't it? So have you ever ridden anything like this? Not a fire blade, no. Mm. It's very extreme, rather powerful. Hooligans bike. <laughs> Are you a hooligan? Could be. <laughs> well, get your helmet on then and let us know what you think. OK. Kevin is testing a 2002 model fire blade priced at 6499 Honda's fire blade has it all, really. Comfort, performance, handling and, above all, street cred. You'll never be embarrassed to tell people you ride a blade. The only trouble is, a lot of other people ride blades too, so if you want to be out of the ordinary, maybe the blade isn't the bike for you. The Fireblade is renowned for its reliability and build quality, and so it should be. Seriously though, Fireblades do last well, and all you really need to check for is full service history and of course the usual checks for accident damage and outstanding finance. It goes without saying that all performance bikes should be checked for signs of a racetrack past, and if any signs are found, then steer well clear. So Kevin, what did we think to the ride of the Fireblade then? Absolutely awesome. Really? Really. Tell me more. Handling is amazing, power delivery is awesome, comfortable. Really? Because they, to me, I think these can be a bit of a handful. I know it's a Honda so it's nice and smooth but I think they can be a bit of a handful. Do you not find that? No, I wouldn't agree. So you're not, you're telling me then? You didn't give it some throttle, like a nice bend and uh, an experimental a bit with it. Once or twice. Yeah. You've got to, it's a fire blade, it's there to be abused. Mm. So you said it was comfortable, riding position, because you are right over on this. I mean, the handlebars are very dipped. Yeah. Yeah. It's very different to the XJR, but the way you sit on it and your body position, you, you, you have to play with these things. Yeah. You can't tootle around on it. But the brakes all right. Yeah, very good. Honda again. You know. Very well put together, nice and reliable. Are you going to use this on the track? I'd hope to, yeah. Mm. I would like to see what it would do flat out down the straight. <laughs> There's a few bends there as well. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> right then, well, each bike we give a score to. So we're going to go to the scoreboards and see what you give the Honda Fireblade. So, Kevin, what do you give it for style? A nine, very good looking bike. Performance? Again, another nine, loads of torque. And practicality? Again, another nine, could be used for work or for pleasure. What about reliability? Nine again, it's a Honda, bulletproof. And finally, value for money? I'd give it an eight for value for money. So that's bike number one, the Honda Fireblade. Did very well on the scoreboards, but of course you don't have to decide just yet because we've got to see bike number two, which is something a little different. Next up is the Yamaha R1. 
Well, what can be said about this bike that hasn't already been told? The R1's name precedes it and many a rider will admit to have been scared to death whilst riding one of these. The R1 was introduced as direct competition for the all-conquering Fireblade and what a good job it did, going straight in as the sports bike to own. Many Blade owners switched camps after hearing about the new tearaway and it's highly unlikely that any of them were disappointed. Surprisingly, like the Fireblade, the R1 has never performed overly well on the track, though I'm sure both Honda and Yamaha will have something to say about that this year with both a new Blade and R1 being available. Well, that's enough of bike number one. Let's see what we've got as bike number two, the Yamaha R1. What do we think to the looks of this? Awesome looking bike. It's great, isn't Very it? Very sleek. Very sleek, yes. Bundles of attitude. Yeah, and you match it. Absolutely. <laughs> Which is always handy. So have you ever been on one of these before? No, my best mate used to have one, but I never went on it, but I look forward to the challenge. <laughs> Did he used to rave about it? You could say that, yeah. Oh, you're going to have to be careful what you say there when you get back. <laughs> <laughs> well, get your helmet on and let us know what you think. The R1 Kevin is riding is a 2001 model priced at £6,500. The R1 was originally introduced in 1998 and was based around current Grand Prix technology. It featured an engine and chassis that were highly influenced by the work of the Yamaha racing divisions. This 2001 R1 has benefited from three years of development and as a result is no longer the race-focused bike its predecessors were. Today's sports bike riders are looking towards real-world rideability and manufacturers like Yamaha are responding by making their bikes more usable in everyday life, to a point. R1s need checking closely for signs of abuse, both the one-wheeled and the track variety. As usual, check for accident damage and if you come across any, then move on as there are many tidy R1s out there. So Kevin, the Yamaha R1, what do we think? Didn't live up to expectations to be honest. Oh, why? I don't know, just it's not the bike for me, I don't feel. Oh, I thought you'd come back with loads of gumption thinking you loved it. These things are rockets. Maybe on the track but not on the road. Yeah? Yeah. Was there something wrong with the actual bike, do you think? Or? I feel it's too small for me. Really? Yeah, whereas the blade was slightly bigger. So it's not the performance? The performance wasn't what I expected either. It must be the bike. It must be this particular bike. Possibly, yeah. There's probably people all over the country with R1 shouting yeah. at the TV at the moment. <laughs> yeah. But it just wasn't for me. Really? Really. So you, you don't think it's necessarily this bike, you think it's the size of it? The size of the bike, the feel of the bike, but I also think that this bike may not be up to spec. May not be up to spec. So, I mean, tell me, was the, the power wasn't there. No. Which is amazing. The brakes? Okay. Handling? The handling was quite good. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of something positive, great. Yeah, um, and, and just to, what comfort wise, how's the seat? No, it's not very comfortable. I feel it's too small. Oh my goodness, so. I thought you'd come back like a giddy kipper on this one, I must say. I must admit this was the one I was looking forward to and it's... Your mate's going to be gutted. I know, yeah, I feel devastated. Oh, you sound it, my goodness, before you get too depressed, let's <laughs> go to the scoreboard. <laughs> so Kevin, what do you give it for style? Nine, it's an awesome looking bike. And performance? I'd give this bike a six, but I think other R1s would probably get a higher mark. What about practicality? A five. If it was your only bike, it could be a little bit impractical. And reliability? Yamaha are bulletproof like Honda, so I'd give it an eight. And value for money? I'd give it a six. So, Kevin, you've had the chance to ride two out of the three bikes this week. I think it's fair to say you preferred the Fireblade. Absolutely. <laughs> but, of course, you can't decide just yet because you've got bike number three to come. But before we go to bike number three, it's time for Dr Rod, who's going to give us some essential tips on making your life with a used bike much easier. Now, any bike will eventually wear out its chain and sprocket, so what can you do to prevent them wearing out too quickly? A little bit of regular maintenance can save you a lot of hassle and a lot of money in the long run. Now the first thing I'm going to do on this side of the bike is slacken off the rear wheel spindle nut here. I've got a socket on there, if I pop that on there, this could be quite tight, but there we are, that's now starting to come loose. Now I need to move around up to the other side and have a look at the chain itself. Now on this side I've already had a look at the chain to make sure it is too slack, and as you can see that one's quite sloppy. But before making any kind of adjustment, the first thing I'm going to do is look for a tight spot on the chain. You'll find that any chain doesn't wear evenly and it's most important to set the tension with the chain at its tightest point. If in doubt, the chain needs to be slack rather than tight. 
that's fine like that but as you can see there's far too much in it so what I'm going to do is make the adjustment by pulling the wheel back in the end of the swinging arm back here to do that we have an adjuster bolt there there's also one on the other side if I put the spanner on that and just slacken that lock nut off like that what I can do now is tighten this bolt up and as I tighten that draw bolt you will see the wheel coming backwards in the swing arm like that now it's most important to keep everything in alignment that I make the same adjustment on both sides and that's why we have these reference marks here once I've got the tension correct on this side we'll just give that a little bit more that's about right I can count back to there to see what my reference mark is there and then set the other side the same before I tighten everything up now that should keep everything straight and in alignment but for the ultimate check of this this is this week's special little gadget this rather smart device has a laser beam in it if I pop that on the sprocket you should be able to see down there that little laser beam light that I can now run along the chain and if the chain runs straight that laser beam will line up to it superb device the other little uh, tip that we do need to look at as well is how to lubricate the chain an aerosol lubrication can like this, if we give that a little bit of a spray then the lubricant will penetrate into the chain links and that's going to help keep your chain in good condition but for the ultimate lubrication you can get one of these devices this is an automatic chain oiler and you can mount this anywhere on your bike and connect it by a system of pipework so it drips a continual oil feed onto the chain and that can prolong chain and sprocket life by up to seven times some kind of a combination of all that lot is going to keep your chain and sprockets in good condition and could save you quite a lot of time and quite a bit of money. And we'll be hearing more from Rod later in the programme. So far this week, Kevin Pumphrey from Birmingham has tested the Honda Fireblade, which he liked, and the Yamaha R1, which he didn't. After the break, we'll be revealing bike number three and we'll see how it shapes up against bikes one and two. See you in a mo. Welcome back to Used Bike Kevin. This week, Kevin Pumphrey from Birmingham, who currently owns an XJR 1300, is looking for a sports bike. He's already tested the Fireblade and the R1 and is about to go out on his third and final test. Let's see what bike number three is. Last up, it's Kawasaki's ZX9R. Kawasaki's one-time cutting-edge sports bike is now seen as more of a sports tourer. A slightly upright riding position combined with comfortable seating makes this bike ideal for long-distance travelling. The ZX9R engine is renowned for plenty of power and, maybe more importantly, its awesome induction roar. Performance is good, with this smooth inline 4 engine pushing the ZX9 along at a very credible but highly illegal speeds. Handling too is very good, allowing you to have plenty of fun around your favourite twisties, but isn't quite on a par with its more modern rivals. Now I don't know if you're going to like this, I certainly do. The Kawasaki ZX9R, what do you reckon to the looks of it? The total package. Yeah? Not so sure about the green, but... You've got to have Kawasaki's in green. No. <gasps> really? Disagree. Oh, I don't know. So you like these then? Because a lot of people kind of think that, you know, I mean, they're getting more towards the sports tourer end now, aren't they? Because they're not as extreme, if you know what I mean. I'm not exactly a frail chap, so the bigger bike would suit me better. Yeah? Right yeah. then, well, we need to know what you think to the ride of it. So you know what I'm going to say. Get your helmet on and tell us what you think. Kevin is testing the 2002 model of the ZX9R priced at 5499 At this price, the ZX9R is the cheapest of this week's bunch. Make sure to examine the condition of these bikes, as this will give you a very good idea of how the bike has been treated. There aren't many areas of concern when it comes to ZX9Rs, but the one thing that does crop up is carb icing, so make sure to check carb heaters are fitted and working. Regular servicing is vital on all bikes, so make sure to check the service book for relevant stamps. As always, check for outstanding finance and insurance issues. So Kevin, the Ninja, what do we think? Absolutely fantastic. Marvellous. Tell me more. Loved it. It's got the power you need, it's got the handling you need, it's got the big bike feel. In and out the traffic, in and out the bends. Is it, did you find it a little bit more upright than the other? Yeah, it was slightly more upright, slightly more sports tourer, mm -hmm. but it, it definitely suited me. Yeah. Do you do a lot of miles on your bikes? Um, it's mostly for fun and the odd bit of touring. Yeah. So power then? Nice and quick? Because I mean, obviously, yeah. you've, been on a, you've been on a blade, you didn't like the R1 and stuff, but I mean, the power's been supposedly there. Yeah, the power's definitely there. If, if you want to play, it'll play all day. Yeah, but you can ride it dead steady as But well. you know, you can take it through town and dead steady, but you could take it on a run and open it up. Good. Brakes all right? Fantastic. Good. 
comfort, I mean, that has to be the nicest Oh suit. yeah, definitely very comfortable. Yeah. Yeah, no aches, no pains. But it's just the colour. Not <laughs> sold on the green yet. <laughs> But you like the bike, it seems. Yeah. Yeah, you seem to have that little grin factor going on there. Well, you've surprised me, actually, I must say. But, uh, I mean, obviously, I don't know too much. So uh, we'll go to the scoreboards and see what you give it on that. So, Kevin, what do you give the Kawasaki for style? Give it a 9, change the colour, it'll get a 10. And performance? Definitely a 10. What about practicality? I'd give it a 10, it's a good all-rounder. Reliability? Another bulletproof engine, give it a 9. And finally, value for money? A 9 overall. So Kevin, you've ridden all three bikes overall on the scoreboard, the Ninja wins with 47 points. But before you make your final decision, it's time to go to Dr Rod who's going to give us a recap of each bike and the pros and cons of second-hand ownership. The Fireblade has spent its production career playing King of the Castle with whatever young pretenders the other manufacturers have managed to throw at it. YZFs, Ninjas and Jixers have all come and gone but the blade is still up there, getting knocked off the top of the performance heap only to keep scrabbling its way back up. But whether or not the blade is this month's flavour at the racetrack or not, it is a superbly engineered and well put together motorcycle. The 929cc engine produces 149 brake horsepower and will pull the bike along at speeds in excess of 170 miles an hour. The fuel injection will guarantee 35 miles to the gallon and those lovely USD forks make sure the bike handles well at all speeds. Now I never thought I'd find myself recommending a Fireblade as a sensible option, but this particular bike does look like it's been very well looked after. It's in standard trim, which is encouraging, but it doesn't have an alarm and it needs one. The R1 is the archetypal nutter tool and needs no introduction as the bike that blew away the opposition back in 1998. Since then it's been continually jostling for position at the very top of the performance tree and has begun to take on the status of a biking icon. Like the other two bikes in tonight's show, it uses a water-cooled four-stroke four-cylinder engine and has proven itself capable of withstanding lots of abuse, which is just as well because that's what R1s tend to get and this bike has had a short but possibly rather a hard life. Now an R1 will withstand the occasional track day but there could be other signs of wear and tear which could mar the overall package. For the asking price, this bike needs to be in very good condition. The data tool alarm and rear hugger are both sensible and useful extras, but I'd like to see a little bit of service history before parting with any cash. The Kawasaki ZX9R is one of our favourites on used bike heaven, and for good reason. For if you're looking for smooth, fast performance, cutting edge handling and aggressive styling, you'll find it all here. And this is one bike that's comfortable enough to ride for longer than 10 minutes at a time too. The 998cc four-cylinder engine produces 140 brake horsepower, which will whisk the bike up to 170 miles an hour. For all this, it still does 40 miles to the gallon, and servicing costs are average rather than expensive. Now, any bike of this size and power will use consumables like tyres and brake pads, but it should be no worse than either the Blade or the R1, and could in fact be cheaper to run than either. With insurance at Group 16, it's a full step lower than the other two bikes, and that data tool alarm could even persuade the brokers to knock another few quid off the price. So, Kevin, you've ridden all three bikes. Which one is it going to be? It's not going to be the R1. It's not going to be the R1. You don't surprise me there. I don't think you liked it. It's not going to be the Blade either. It's not going to be the Blade. So that leaves us with a ZX9R, which I thought you'd go for, to be honest with you. Mm. Why? Total package. I could use it for work. I could use it on a track day. I could go out for a thrash on it and I could tour on it. Mm -hmm. And you could live bike. with the colour. I'm getting to live with the colour now. <laughs> You're talking yourself into it, aren't you? I'm trying, like yeah. <laughs> well, fair dues. I mean, to be honest, it shouldn't put you off. So all that remains to be seen then is what deal we can get for you. Yeah. Should we go and talk to them? We should. Let's go. Today's deal is being done at DK Motorcycles in Newcastle under Lyme. Kevin will be trying to haggle with Gary Mackay over the ZX9R, which is currently on sale for £5,499. Right, Gary, this is Kevin. Kevin, Gary. Hi, Kev. How are you doing? So, as you know, we've tested three bikes and Kevin is interested in seeing what deal he can do on the ZX9R. So, over to you, Kevin. I am interested in the ZX9R, but I've got an XJR 1300 at the moment with... It's six months old with 1700 mile on the clock. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've looked at the book um, to see what the bike is worth. Um, it's a good um, second-hand part X, to be honest with you. You'll always get more money for it, as you know, selling it in a, in a private sale. I would be looking to give you, it's booking at 3.9 um, with 3,000 miles, obviously, it's underneath the miles. I'd be looking to give you around about the 4.2 for it. 
Um, the bike that you're looking at, which is the green uh, ZX9, which obviously has a few aftermarket parts mm. on it, nice little yeah, minus. one owner from new and stuff. I'll be able to do you that for around about the 52 mark. So you'll be looking at around wow. about a thousand pound to swap on the, the second hand one. But I do have some new ones that I'm doing at the moment as well at 5995, brand new in silver. So that's another option that you have. Standard. Absolutely standard. You don't have any of the security on that one. You don't have uh, any of the aftermarket cans. Um, but the one thing you do have with a new bike is you'll know every mile that it's done. You, you know it's not been uh, thrashed unless you thrashed it. Okay. <laughs> so with the um, the Partex price, even though spending more money on the on the new bike, mm -hmm. Partex price will stay the same, or are you going to give a bit more? It'll stay the same because I'm already giving them over and above um, book on it. Um, basically, because it is such a good bike to have in the shop to, to sell on as in, in a second hand buy, you know. Okay. Definitely. So with these new bikes, then why are they uh, such a good deal? The actually stopped the ZX9 now, it's uh, not being produced anymore, this is its last production run, um, whether they bring it out again, who knows, um, I think I was actually leaving a bit of a gap in their own market, it's a good bike, it's always been overlooked, mm. um, people go from the 60s, the 7s up to the later bikes, that's and what the, I did, the ZX9 has always been overlooked and it's been a fantastic bike, it's got an amazing motor, um, lovely handling, and it's the best of all the sports tourers, um, it's nice comfy pillion seat, um, unbelievably robust motor. Um, you don't get that much problems with them, um, if at all. And it's, let's say, it's always worth a look. It's always worth a look. Definitely always to go away and think about yeah. it, Kevin, yeah? Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. No yeah. problem, Kevin. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be for here that, anyway. <laughs> so, Kevin, what do you make of that deal? Not the best deal. Not enough for your bike, really, not was really, it? Not really, not considering it's six months old. Yeah. So what are you going to do? Uh, keep looking at the moment. For a ZX9? Absolutely, yeah. You do feel that is the bike for you then? Oh, you definitely, yeah. Bring back the hooligan. <laughs> the love of the XJR has gone out the window. Yeah. <laughs> well, keep me posted on what you're going to do, won't you? Absolutely. Okay. Well, that's it for this week. Join us next week for some more used bike heaven. Kevin didn't get the deal he wanted on the show, but he soon found a ZX9 to fit his budget. He traded in his XJR and is enjoying his new bike. I'm glad we were able to point him in the right direction.